Hi everybody, my name is Annette and welcome to Cotto Verdi. Happy New Year to everybody. Um, today I thought I would show you how I've changed up the pots outside my front door area. These are pots that I planted about a year ago. They're in an area that gets a lot of shade, a tiny bit of morning sun in the summer months, but mostly shade. And I thought it'd be really useful for people who've got maybe a north facing garden or a shaded patio to show you why I've taken certain plants out and put them in my garden garden and what I've replaced them with because I think it's going to work a lot better. I just want to apologise if you can hear people soaring um, in the background. There's someone taking a tree down in our lane. But uh, let me just get on with talking you through what I've done here in these pots. So the main things that I've done is I have taken out the hostas and the hokera. The reason I've taken the hostas out is because whilst they look wonderful, whilst they were in bloom and when the leaves were out, during the winter months they were either a squidgy slimy mess in the autumn from all the rain that we get here in the UK, or they were just completely empty spaces and I couldn't plant anything on top of them because they had really big roots and so it's just an empty space in the container and I didn't like that. So the things that I've got in the pots have to be primarily evergreen and that is what I've discovered. The reason I've taken the hookahs out is because I found that the hookahs, um, I was having a lot of trouble with vine weevils, especially in the spring, and they were just eating all the roots. And although you can treat vine weevils successfully with nematodes, I just didn't want that additional job to have to do. Um, and I find that the hookahs are really susceptible to the vine weevil larvae just munching away at the roots. So what I've done is I've taken the hookahs out and I've planted them in um, a sort of semi-shaded area in the garden, in the front garden, and I've taken all the hostas out and dotted those around my garden in the shaded areas. I've either put them in areas where I've already got some hostas or I've just created new patches of them because I did have quite a lot of hostas in this area and there were like many different varieties. I also took out a Brunnera that I had because I felt that it was just getting too big for the pot. So there was a lovely Brunnera here and I've put that with the hostas and some other Brunneras that I have in the front garden. So absolutely nothing was wasted, I haven't been a thing, but and in fact it's been really helpful to have more plants in the front garden in the shady areas. Um, but what I've done is I have replaced them with various evergreens and I'm going to go through the particular varieties that I've chosen and I'm also going to show you where I've put in some bedding plants just to fill in spaces um, during this winter season. I'm also going to just talk you through the plants that I have found to be very successful in these pots and that I really love and what I've left here. So in this pot here I've now got a lovely Lakotho, I don't know how you say it, and I think it's called Curly Red and it's got these wonderful sort of, well, curly red leaves and I particularly like this because it's evergreen. I like the lovely red colour that you get along with the green. I think the red is confined mainly to the new shoots, but I think that's absolutely gorgeous. And I think out of this pot, I definitely took a Pulmonium and an Astilbe, actually. That's the other thing that I've moved because again, the Astilbe's just aren't evergreen. And so I had spaces where I had the Astilbe's. So in this pot, I've also got, you know, a lovely Christmas rose, a Hellebore and um, that's just coming into flower now and I've also planted some of these really pretty I mean that one's dead so do deadhead your violas and pansies but this is a lovely you know buttery yellow colour and I've also planted some of the wallflowers that I grew from seed so I've got a couple of wallflowers in this pot and a couple of violas. In the back here I've also got a cineraria and this will be um, a lovely silvery structural plant throughout the year and it should um, fill up and take up some more space. It does have yellow flowers in the summer but I tend to chop those off because I don't particularly like them um, but I'm going to see how that does. It may take up too much space with this plant but at the moment it's just a little extra bit of colour. Also in this pot I've got some variegated ivy that um, I had in the pots previously. You can see how long it is and I just really like its trailing habit and it will just continue to grow. Um, I Basically what I had was I had um, one plant uh, or a couple of plants and I've split them up so it looks a little bit small at the moment but by the summer this will definitely bush out and take up some more space. So in this pot here I've got this absolutely gorgeous variegated um, fur. I'm not sure, did I keep the label for this one? I don't know whether it came with the label. 
if it came with the label I tend to tuck them down the sides but anyway this is going to stay quite small it's a lovely soft texture I love the fact that it's variegated it's kind of a creamy yellowy color which is really nice and um, it will grow very slowly so this is a particularly good plant for this trough here in front of the window I've got another Chenorea Cinerea and another one of the Christmas roses in fact that one's finished flowering so do deadhead this is a lovely what was a purple cordialis um, but it's they're not particularly hardy and I really um, I shouldn't have put it here or I should have protected it if I did so it was a lovely gorgeous structural element it was quite tall but we've had a really super cold spell I think it got to minus seven uh, which for us is much colder than we'd normally get or certainly the coldest we'd get and it hasn't survived there's a tiny bit of purple at the bottom still so it may come back um, we're gonna have to see it might be lucky because it was tucked in at the back here in this pot I've also got some lovely purple violas um, and they're just coming into flower actually so that's pretty good and this is an evergreen that I had in um, the pot previously but you can see it's really straggly because it was swamped I think it might be some kind of ilex something like that but I'm hoping that it's going to bush out with a bit of food in the summer so this plant here I'm actually not sure what they're called I should know really shouldn't I um, but they you can find them a lot in the garden centers here at Christmas and they have these gorgeous pink berries or white berries on them and again I think this got hit when we had all the snow and the ice and the berries have kind of gone glassy and a bit squishy and disgusting but I mean maybe if I shake them off it'll look a bit better maybe that's what I should do anyway it was a lovely splash of color um, during the Christmas season I was really happy with like the purple and the pink and it looked pretty so in this pot here um, this is where I originally had a really lovely red hookera and it was gorgeous but it just it wasn't tall enough and I was again I was combating um, all sorts of things I was having to use nematodes to get rid of the vine weevil and I'd rather just not have to deal with that so what I put in its place is a Pyrus japonica this one's called Little Frosty and it's got this gorgeous variegation on the leaves I really like the leaf structure it kind of forms these rosettes and this will get much bigger so over time this is going to get to about um, 80 centimeters so it'll be um, I guess nearly three foot tall um, and that would be just a really lovely bit of structure here and it will probably take over the whole pot so I have tried to plant it centrally in the meantime whilst it's still quite small I've again put in some lovely pansies and they're just coming into flower this one has flowered so what I'm going to do is deadhead it if you deadhead your pansies then they won't set seed and then you'll get a longer flowering period and more flowers and again I've got some more of this ivy that um, I split from an ivy that I had originally in these pots and you can see that it's a lovely again a lovely variegation that hopefully should go quite well with this so this pot originally I think had um, a hostas and a brunnera and I've taken those things out because they just didn't fill the space enough so in the place of the things that I took out of this particular pot here I'm just going to take that off deadhead that um, I've got this lovely cypress and it's sort of so it's very very blue but it's kind of got these little white streaks to it and it just creates this gorgeous textural element it's really soft and it moves in the breeze and I really like that I've also got another um, hellebore here a Christmas rose they're all white the hellebores that I've chosen for these pots because I think they go particularly well and you can see how pretty they are do deadhead them um, and then I've got this lovely um, green ivy and I really like the pointed leaves on this ivy and because the ivies are doing quite well in these pots and I love their trailing habit I've planted this as a new ivy so it's not one of the variegated ones I had originally and I think it's absolutely gorgeous it's just a really rich green color so over in this pot here I've left the fern in this pot because it was doing really well and I mean it looks a bit straggly at the moment but actually it's growing really nicely so I've left that in here and this is the pot that I will probably change up more often throughout the season so in it at the moment I've got some wallflowers that I grew from seed they are actually getting a little bit eaten so I'm gonna have to come out here in the dark and deal with the snails and then I've also got some more of these lovely 
um, pink pansies. And then at the back here, I've got one of my pet hates actually, it's a heather, but I really um, liked the pink and the white colour that it brought to this pot um, over this Christmas winter season. And so that's why I've got the heather in here, but it probably won't stay. I will probably move the heather at some point next year when I'm putting some more annuals in the front here. So the plants that have done really well for me in this area is this gorgeous Pittosporum that I have here and you can see this, I love this rusty crown and it's kind of grown through the rusty crown in exactly the way that I wanted it to and you know it's getting almost so big that it's disguising the pot underneath it but I absolutely love it. It's supposed to keep this sort of rounded shape but I may come along at some point in the spring and just make it a little bit more rounded but I really love it. It's doing exactly what I wanted it to do and just sort of spilling over. So the other plant that I've left in place for now is this Picea here at the back. And we've got two of these and this one for some reason just wasn't doing very well, but it has actually gone from being very brown and unhappy to leafing out again and it's now green again. There's a tiny patch at the top here where it's still a little bit brown but I'm going to leave it for now in the hope that it's going to bounce back. I have planted a tiny bit of ivy just in the front there um, and I'm hoping that's going to sort of trail around the whole pot and look really pretty. So at the moment the Picea is going to stay um, but we'll see how it fares in the future. If it is not happy in this spot this year then I'm definitely going to take it out and put something else in its place. I'm going to show you what the other side of the front door looks like now and I did try to make them very similar but I think actually what's happened is they're not as similar as maybe I thought they would be. Um, so I'm going to go through some of those plants where there are differences. So we've moved from this area past the front door to the right hand side of the front door and you can see in this area that the Picea over here is looking much greener than the one over on this side and this one's a bit more sparse so I'm not really sure what's going on they should be doing as well as each other. Um, I have topped up the compost in the one that's not doing so well. So at the back here, um, what I did was I um, took everything out of this pot and I moved the fern from the pot in front into this pot and it's taken up the whole pot. And then I've put a tiny bit of this green ivy, um, the new green ivy, into this pot as well. And I'm hoping that it will sort of come around this side a bit. Maybe I can persuade it help it to come around the front of it like that and then over in this pot here over here I've got exactly the same plant I've got another Pyrus japonica the variegated one and I've put some wallflowers around the front of it so in these pots in the front um, this pot here I took out a huge Brennera you can see that I've put a heather in the middle there but it won't stay and I shall definitely be replacing that but I've got some gorgeous um, Christmas roses more hellebores here and they're looking you know really pretty and then I've got another one of those I think it's the creamy yeah it is it's the creamy yellow um, pansy there at the front some more of the wallflowers that I grew from seed and another pansy at the back so in this trough here I tried to mimic what had gone on the other side and I've got you know one of these gorgeous variegated conifers I've got another baby Picea so if the one over the other side of the front door doesn't survive then I'll replace it <laughs> with this one over time it is much smaller this is the variegated ivy that I absolutely love some more hellebores and a few little, you know, pansies and chinoria, chinoria, I don't know how you say that. Um, so I'm just deadheading these while I'm talking to you. Very important to deadhead so that you get more flowers. And then another one of these gorgeous berry plants that has not fared well in the super cold weather, but you can see the gorgeous pink color that it was originally. So then over here I've got another one of these gorgeous um, Pittosporums. I've got the Pussy Abies at the back. Over in this pot I've got another Leucantha which is exactly the same as the one the other side and um, one of these lovely variegated ivies with a pansy in the front. And then this pot at the back here is the only one that's very different and this is a Hebe. So I'll have some gorgeous flowers from the Hebe and I just love the way this Hebe sort of moves in the breeze um, and it's underplanted again with some more pansies. 
So all in all what I've tried to do is create an area that's got some structure throughout the year, has little pops of colour when I need it, but also I wanted to create an area that has movement, which is why I particularly like the ferns, and the Pittosporum is not clipped too tightly so it still moves in the breeze. The same with Hebe, that kind of sways in the breeze. And then obviously with the lovely, you know, little cypress and, you know, the firs, they're very textural and they're kind of like something that you want to reach out and touch. So that's what I've tried to do in this area and I'm really hoping that there are not going to be too many more changes. I mean obviously there's always change in a garden but I'm really hoping that this will be okay for a while and will bring me joy every time I approach my front door and you know maybe it's given you some ideas about things that you could put in a shaded area in your garden especially if you've got like pots on a shaded patio or maybe around a summer house or a shed you want to put some pots but it's very shaded then these are the kind of things that you can plant obviously all of these plants could also go in the ground so that's it for today if you've enjoyed this video and you found it useful then please do give it a thumbs up thumbs up because it really helps other people find my videos um, in case they find them useful also if you want to see more from my garden then do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and you know i would really look forward to chatting with everybody if you've got any questions at all um, then do pop them in the comments below and i'll get back to you so anyway thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.